today we're covering my review of AMS 2. It is out to the public. It's been out for a little while. I'm a little late to it. I've uh, been very busy, uh, busy, busy schedule. So, uh, but I'd like to give you my opinion on it, and I'm just going to rate it as a buy, pass, or uh, wait for a strong sell on Steam. Now, uh, just to cover the prices right now, it's 40 bucks. And if you want the DLC, which covers all the way to 2021, is 100 bucks. I think the DLC is uh, probably a pass right off the bat. Uh, or I'm sorry, wait for a sale off the bat, uh, back for you, uh, just to you get acclimated to the game to make sure that you really love it. And then once you discover that you love it, then buy the DLC or wait for a sale, because uh, Steam always has sales on this stuff. So, uh, But as far as the game goes, just right off the bat, if you're a true sim racer and you love racing, if you loved Project Cars 2, you don't even have to love Project Cars 2, but... If you enjoy Project Cars 2 as far as having the dynamic track and weather and the graphics of it, this is a buy um, straight off the bat because it takes the great things about Project Cars 2 and then it adds proper cars that feel good. Not some of the cars that felt good in Project Cars 2. Some of them were like really good, right? And then others are just like, whoa, this sucks. What were y'all thinking? This one, every car feels really good uh, in its own right, right? So if you drive a VW Bug and stuff, it's really slow and, and stuff like that. But it feels good for what it is. Uh, but yeah, this this one is definitely a buy if you're a sim racer and enjoy uh, feeling the connection between you and the cars being one-to-one. -one. Uh, this is really good. Now, if you come from AMS 1 and uh, are expecting AMS 1 force feedback and stuff, it's not quite there um, yet, or maybe will never be quite there. Uh, that you know, that's a consideration. Uh, they've already updated the graphics, or I'm sorry, the uh, force feedback to be better and better, uh, and it is actually really, really good. Uh, way better, like I said, than Project Cars 2. Way better than uh, I, I would say it's actually in line with a set of courses competition. Uh, it's really good as far as how it feels to me. It's, it's more like ACC. I can transition between those two games pretty well and uh, not feel... ACC feels a little bit uh, more clear uh, frequency to me, uh, but I don't know. This is really, really good. You would not be disappointed uh, if you're someone that comes from iRacing, R-Factor 2, um, ACC, or a set of course itself. Uh, this would be on par with those uh, as far as uh, force feedback goes and feeling connected to your car. So that gets the main aspect out of the way for us hardcore simmers out there. You know, uh, how does the car feel? How do they feel? They all feel really good. Uh, highly recommend you to try it out. Uh, at least do the, you know, the, uh, um, you know, where I think Steam, you can try it out for a couple hours and then if you don't like it, ditch it, right? So. Let's get into the rest of it. So the the um, the uh, elephant in the room is Brazilian cars and tracks, right? So what the hell are those? What are excuse me? What are those, right? Um, so let's let's cover the menu system real quick and uh, and, and options. So options. If you use Project Cars two, if you've seen Project Cars two, it's the same. Let's not dive in too deep on it, but exactly the same. As far as you know, your frames ahead, your reflections, your environment map, car details, all that exactly the same. Set up your VR just the same. Uh, obviously, right now I'm not doing VR because it's a little bit easier to record. Uh, your audio, camera, FX, gameplay, all that's the same. As far as recognizing, uh, I'm sorry, your your controls and stuff, you set it the same. Force feedback, that's the thing that's a little bit different here. You have default and you have custom, so you can do a custom one, which looks like you could probably Someone like Jack Spade or something could do a custom profile for you, uh, like they did with Project Cars 2, but uh, you don't need it here. Uh, it's really good. Uh, default, uh, now that it's in final release, it's it's all converted over to 1. There used to be 2. Uh, and you can see here my settings. Gain 60, low force boost 40, FX 50. All these are, are, are what I run and like. Sometimes I turn up the gain to 70. Don't really need any higher than that for this particular game. Uh, low force boost. Nice thing about that one, just a quick note, is that it doesn't affect your overall game. So it just only affects 
uh, when the steering's really light off the bat uh, for some cars, like you know the F1 cars or something like that. Uh, those type of car, whatever car it is that feels a little too light for you, you can add a little bit of low force uh, feedback to feel the bumps and stuff a little bit better at at lower speeds, right? Um, so, and then the gain, of course, is the overall for it all. FX is more like your engine rumbles, your curbing, stuff like that. Uh, 50 for direct drive wheel is, is about right. I actually turn it off sometimes just to test it out. Uh, last night I did that, turned it off, and I actually liked it a little better with it all and just use what Sim Experience has uh, for it. So, anyway, um, speaking of Sim Experience, if you do have an AccuForce wheel, they do now have the cloud. Uh, service for this so you can literally switch from car to car to car to car and it'll reload a profile for you automatically uh, so you don't have to fiddle with the settings and stuff and then you do have of course settings you can mess with uh, but it's more like layers of adding a little bit more engine vibration a little bit more uh, curb feel you know from road effects uh, stuff like that um, so yeah really cool Cool note that that's here and this actually does work great with if you have a motion rig it's already uh, linked up for next level racing as far as motion goes so the pluses I look for is, is, is the feel of the car and it works for my motion and direct drive wheel all right you knocked it out of the park I'm gonna check you out right uh, and then lo and behold this actually turned out good so back to the cars and tracks uh, real quick because I get sidetracked sometimes because I get excited about this stuff uh, let's cover the tracks real quick. There is a lot of tracks. Uh, some people are going to be like, no, nah, man, I don't even know these tracks. What do I do? Uh, are they any good? Try them out and see, okay? Uh, there are some on here that are, are you're familiar with. You know, if you play Project Cars 2 or 1, uh, like Azure Circuit, Bathurst, Brands Hatch, Caldwell Park, Donington, uh, Amola. Let me see. Jerez. Actually, Jerez wasn't even... I don't think that was in Project Cars 2, but you you should be familiar with that one. Uh, let's see, Montreal, Alton Park, Sneederton, uh, VIR. So it's quite a few tracks that you would be familiar with from playing in other racing games, right? And the rest of them, yeah, you're not you're not familiar with uh, Campo Grande, right? <laughs> but try it out. It's something different. I get so bored of using the same old tracks. Uh, it's challenging to go check out some of these Brazilian tracks that are modeled beautifully and uh, you get to learn a new track, it's a new track to drive on, it's just fun. So uh, I think it adds a nice little uh, um, upgrade to the sim, sim, uh, sim racing experience that you get to try out all these different tracks and stuff. Uh, I mean heck, modders go out there and make mod tracks of tracks you've never even maybe heard of uh, from their country, right? And you check them out for like a set of courses and stuff like that. So this one, you know, you got the developer giving you all the Brazilian tracks because this is basically a Brazilian race game. And uh, yeah, it's good stuff. I like it, actually. So get, give it a shot. Uh, cars. Uh, I, I'm not keen to all these cars myself. Uh, I do have a few favorites like this GT4, the Super Cup here. Love this car. But you got this Art Camaro. That actually is a lot of fun to play. Uh, 110 horsepower, but it's like driving around a go kart with, with uh, bodywork around you. You know, it's a, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Caterhams, I've never been a big fan of those. I don't get it. Uh, I mean, it, it's they're okay, but they're just not my cup of tea. But if you like them, they got the huge selection of them. Now these cars here, all the like you got the Chevette and Uno and and uh, Copa Classic B, uh, Puma. Some of these you may recognize, right? Like the Chevette, right? Um, and some of these drive are actually really good, but I'm not a huge fan. I don't really linger around this area here, the Copa Classics. I don't really play those. Uh, I have tried them out. Uh, that one I absolutely do not like at all. <laughs> but uh, Bugs are kind of fun. Actually, if you go to the Bugs, uh, the ones I like is the hot cars. And racing these particular Bugs, I think they're a little bit more horsepower, 170 horsepower. And a lot more fun. Actually, all these cars are actually pretty fun under the hot cars. I, I do like them. Uh, but then, of course, you got uh, something really different that you may not know if you're if you're not if you're new to Riza. They have this whole um, truck uh, <laughs> rigs 
uh, to race around. So you got all these in the game, in the one game. This used to actually be its own game by itself. So uh, that's here in this game as well. Um, Unos, I uh, don't care for those. F3s, these I really love. Love these. These are a lot of fun to drive. 285 horsepower, not too overpowered. Uh, sticks to the ground. Uh, just a lot of fun. Those are one of my favorites to play. The Classics now, these are good. 1120 horsepower. It's insane to drive one of these on the track and uh, a little difficult to get around a track. Uh, so, but they are fun. I do enjoy the Formula Classics. Uh, these are like the the uh, half the horsepower versions. And then of course here are some more classics. The F Rezas, that one's fun as well. Retros, don't really care for the retros. I think they look baller, uh, but they're not something I really care to drive. See, uh, anyway, these are fun. The Ultimates, the V10s are good. The V12s are fun. Formula Vs, those are fun. Uh, see, Vintage. Uh, they're okay. They're not, not my cup of tea. GT4, uh, GT5. GT5 is like, eh, it's okay. That's not that great. GT4 really likes, sticks good to the road, handles really well. Ultimate, one of my favorite cars there. Uh, like I said, hot cars. Karting, I'm not big into karting, but it is there. Uh, so it has, you know, as you can see, it has a vast variety of vehicles that you can choose from. You don't have to go buy a separate game, just do karts. You don't have to buy a separate game to do formula type racing uh, if you just want to turn laps now if you want the formula like f1 2020 just came out you want the full immersion of having your own team and all that of course get that but if you want something that actually feels good and, and handles good on the track and has motion with it and vr with it there you go all right so uh opals don't really care for those these p1s p2 p3 p4 cars all, all pretty fun uh p4s are uh, my least no p3s are my least favorite p2s i really like and uh these p1 this one here is really fun too uh the genetis uh but yeah they all and they all actually handle different i spent a lot of time on the p1s oops go back oh shoot uh see how quick the menu system is so each one of these cars actually handle different like let me see this this one here is a straight four and uh, see this white one is a uh was the v6 right so when this one spools up on the turbo on it it's really hard to handle because then it just wants to step out on you really hard you really got to get into the throttle soft and then when it, it spools up really fast and, and it's hard to tame actually so the, all these cars have a really uh individual feel to them the way they feel through the chassis through the front end grip the rear end grip to stepping out uh diving under braking um uh, body roll with motion you kind of feel all that stuff right uh so <laughs> really really fun stuff stock cars are actually a lot of fun too this just came out with the release 2020 uh, and this one was already there the stock car brazils street cars i don't know what they did with this camaro it's horrible uh that that needs to be fixed uh but this uh ultimate gtr pretty good i wouldn't waste my time i don't waste my time on it when you got the regular ultimate race car and I'm in a racing game. So, uh, super carts, fun. Uh, and the super V8s, uh, really good. So, you know, favorites are all the P series ones, the V8, super V8, Ultimas, uh, the stock cars. Oh, also the Sprint. Forgot about that one. Sprints were a lot of fun, too. So, some of these actually have headlights, and, and or most of them have headlights. Uh, some of them don't. So, you don't want to be particular about when you race. Real quick about, um, going through here now i'll show you a little bit of gameplay at the end of it and you can watch it at the end and stuff but i covered all the cars i covered all the tracks i covered all the selections here and um now we're just going to go into a race and and we'll i'll just talk about what i feel out on track but in conclusion just to wrap it up uh really quickly so if you don't if you're not interested in watching the rest of it and getting my feedback as i feel the car on the track but uh, uh because it actually starts to bog down the graphics filming both of these cameras and the ingrain game graphics at first but uh, my suggestion for this game is a buy uh, and if you are someone that is just like totally unsure about the track selection and the car selection you don't know if it's going to be for you then wait for a sale but for 40 bucks for a game 
it's a buy uh, for me. I would wait on the DLC for a sell on that. And that's it. It's uh, pretty good. Hope you enjoyed this review. We will see you next time. No, uh, let's go into talking about the uh, what I fell out on track. So, uh, GT4, I'm going to do that one right there. And we'll do Jerez. Jerez is actually a pretty dang fun track to do. And you can feel it stepping out and stuff. So, I'll, I'll try to uh, cover that. Now, graphics, like I said, graphics, VR, uh, and triple screens, it all supports that. But I'm going to go ahead and do this on 2D screen and put this on so I can hear my car. <laughs> and then uh, tell you what I fell out on track. So, all right. Now, usually with this going on, you would hear the, uh, I don't hear any sound. We're, oh, I know why. Had my headphones unplugged. <laughs> All right. Usually when you first crank it on, um, you'll hear that sim experience will say, hey, you got the, you know, it found the car and, and combination and stuff for it. So since it already did it once, I guess it's not gonna do it again. But if you go switching from car to car, it'll, it'll tell you that message. Now, those bumps feel really good. It's easy to step this particular car out and run it on the limit because what happens is that like you would experience in ACC you really feel the front end push and then grab some traction and then, and then you know slide right uh, feels really good it's like here it's easy to step it out a little bit get a little carry away on and uh, have fun slide in the back end now if you have your I turn my transducers off so you can actually hear me talk but uh, with those, it's really neat when you take off from the starting line. Uh, you are you feeling the back end spin up, and then whenever you're locking up the front brakes, you feel the transducers up front just sliding. Uh, so a lot of communication uh, with the particular rig that I'm using. But for those that don't use that, it's communicating very well through the wheel. When you're loading up the tires, you feel yourself loaded up right there. You feel your, you know, when it's given loose really easy. It's not like some games that you play that you don't know what the, you know what the car is doing when it does stuff like that a slide but you can't recover it right this one if you can't recover it you know why you can't recover it uh, so very very remnants of say like uh, AMS uh, 1 and R Factor 2 for that matter ACC as well so of course uh, you, you kind of know what your car is doing uh, if you got a snap oversteer you know you gotta snap over steer because you messed up, right? Good feel through here. So when you're in a turn, you feel the road surface uh, really well. It's not just dead like some games where it's dead. We're going down the front straight. You can see my wheel uh, force feedback is kind of falling the undulations of of the road. I feel me load up the front tires through there. Turn in, got loose on the back end, and just could feel how much throttle I need to apply through that slide uh, to not kick it out too far to lose complete control of it as well as feeling what my front end's doing so I mean shoot man what else do you want I mean it communicates to you what your car is doing all the time this is on all the vehicles all of them do it very well now obviously for some vehicles you're gonna want to you know test with it oh man that feels so good <laughs> You felt it slide and then grip all of a sudden and then slide. Uh, man, this game's made really well for direct drive uh, wheels. I haven't tested any other wheels on it because why? I have a direct drive wheel. But um, it would be interesting to see though, uh, a belt driven wheel, Logitech G29, something like that. See what it would feel like. Uh, but yeah, yeah, communication is really good on this one. And then when you couple motion, you can tell you know what your car is doing you don't have to run off of just sight and stuff so yeah pretty damn good right here uh menu system here on, out on track you'll see to the right of the screen there and the left they did upgrade the menus a little bit here i have the simplified version on the full version like if you're used to project cars 2 where it has the big tack and all that on there it doesn't show up yet so I just have I don't normally run that one anyways because I don't want too much clutter in my screen but yeah that one's 
and that wants to fish it does tell you how much fuel you got if this particular car has DRS or the KERS system on it so you can see my wheel going back and forth right it's you feel when it's gripping and not gripping and stuff so there's some cars I'm gonna slow down and see them get around me here that little jolt you saw there in the camera if you saw it for some reason with sim experience I get that occasionally I think it's doing a cloud backup or something uh, but I haven't noticed it with other sims yet uh, now here's of course another you know option here you got your you know your helmet cam on this is actually pretty fun to run and uh, it looks pretty good it look you have that option of it looking through the curves for you uh, automatically so if you are running on a single str screen like this uh, it does go ahead and automatically look through the curve so you can identify where you want to go so yeah pretty cool it doesn't do that in the regular cockpit view uh, screen for some reason and I don't recall if Project Cars 2 did that as well uh, in the cockpit view I know it did it in the helmet view but uh, comment if you remember but yeah see it automatically pan the camera over and you can adjust how much you want it to do it as well I think I have it around 70% or something like that right now. Man, it feels good. Uh, see the other views here, if you like them, if you're on a controller. Now, I have not tested this game with a controller. I uh, don't care to. Uh, but if you're interested, if you want me to, I'll test it and see. If I have enough people that want me to go do that. All right. And they did adjust the... Uh, slider for these guys so I think the lowest AI setting you have is like around 70% I'll, I'll look real quick let's look real quick it is gameplay no uh, no oh, I think you got to select it in the beginning actually so I can't but 70 to 110 percent so they've really honed in the ai now ams1 was really good for the ai some of the best ai out there actually to play with and these are actually not bad at all uh they do tend to move out of your way when you get stuck out on the track or crash uh they don't really pile up as long as you keep it around the 90 percent mark uh you're pretty good uh to where they're not loading up in the corners so much and uh and not just running away from you on the straights you know it's it seems fair so uh that's another aspect for so for single player racing man this game's fun you get to try out all these different cars different tracks that you're not necessarily used to i just want to have a championship mode that i can set up myself to run to feel like i'm doing something besides turning laps uh, that would be the only downside to this game is that it doesn't have that champion custom championship mode where you can just not feel like you're out on a track day or a single race day uh, something where you could do a, a whole championship across a bunch of different tracks to experience and uh, so a little bit more of a uh, you know career mode actually I guess is what you would say so it does miss that uh, now also one thing that Project Cars 2 did that this one doesn't do is that you had your 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 pit crew now this one actually has pit crews <laughs> so you can go in and pit let me let me show you I'm gonna pit in and they'll change your tires and stuff but what they haven't fixed yet and I and no other people don't really mention this is that adjusting your pit crew ahead of time as far as what you want them to do and save those settings project cars 2 is real good about that this one has not done that yet so I'm assuming that's gonna come in the future but uh yeah, they didn't, don't do it. And also, you don't hear the pit crew guy coming. Now, I use um, uh, da, 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 the uh, the other program, the command, something commander. I forgot what the hell it's called. But anyway, uh, I use an outside program that uses that tells you you know what's going on. Um, but you can see my pit crews out there waiting for me. Uh, all ready to give me tires if I need them, but I, I know I'm not gonna need tires. I'll just probably need gas But like here it's doing the fuels fueling it up But maybe I don't want to uh, spend time fueling or maybe I just want only 10 gallons of fuel and repair I'm like the car handles fine. Let's not do any repairs. Let's just keep going right 
Uh, project Cars 2, you could do that. You could skip repairs. You could, you know, assign how much you want for fuel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is not here yet at release one. So it's coming though. They disappeared. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, other than that, everything works really well. Showed you, I think I showed you everything here. I don't want this video to go too long because uh, it already has. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at Project Cars 2. Let me get out to the outside view here. I'm gonna put it, park it right here in the track. You can see what they do if we if we're sitting here long enough. Oh. All right, so that's a good view. Here comes some cars. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look or this re actually review uh, of Project Car or Project. Car I want to call it Project Cars 2 because it looks just like it. Now, I didn't show you the dynamic tracks or anything like that as far as the rain goes and stuff. But believe me, it looks good. You can see the clouds going across. You can set your time of day. You can set it to your actual time of day or you can set the fast forward it, you know, X amount of time. So you could pretty much simulate a 24-hour race if you wanted to uh, through the uh, elapse in the time ahead so pretty good <clears throat> but anyway I hope you enjoyed it uh, really baller game actually and it looks great runs VR really really well uh, continually hitting 80 FPS in VR look at my VR setting video for this game uh, if you're interested but yeah you can pretty much max out most of the stuff in this game with VR so uh, triple screens I don't have them so can't test that for you but anyway uh, if you like the video hit like if you if sharing is caring and uh, subscribe for more we'll catch you out on the track I'm out see ya